Well, welcome into the conversation. It's Adrian Lawrence, your host. And this time, I am joined by an attorney who also happens to be a candidate for Maine's second congressional district. That's Tiffany Bond. Thanks so much for joining us, Tiffany. Oh, gosh. Thank you so much for having me. Yes. All right. So, gosh, midterm elections are just around the corner. There is so much going on. And I know you have been in this fight and you've been steadily pushing forward. Where are you right now in terms of the election? Well, it's certainly been a journey and an adventure. We are in a unique spot in Maine because we have ranked choice voting. So that means there's no functional polling on our race at all. <laughs> well, that's always helpful, um, especially when, you know, sometimes it can be helpful, but I guess it makes you probably even more driven to get in there and to ensure that people hear your name, they know what you stand for. And so if you were talking to some of those potential or constituents out there, what would you say to them? Well, I'm in a race that's a, a little quirky. So we have a Republican running and he is um, you know, he's sort of like the personification of nonsense. He he's everything that we have come to love about what is happening with the Republican Party. And we have a Democrat that's a little bit nonsense adjacent himself. Um, and I'm the boring one. I'm boring, I'm reasonable, I'm competent. Uh, I work with federal law all day long, and I just want to go write some. So it's it, it's it's been a, a journey with me talking about law and then the men showing up in lobster gear or shotgunning beers. It's 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 a surreal experience for sure. Oh, absolutely. I'm sure you're just like, well, what do I do with this? That's um that's just not I think you were right when you said nonsense and nonsense adjacent because that sure seems to be what it sounds like. And I know you just talked kind of about the law and the fact that you talk about it on a daily basis as an attorney. And you've been quoted as saying that you like cost effective kind law. What do you mean by that? So I work with a lot of federal law, I'm a family law attorney. And a lot of the things that you see cross my desk. So um, the social services network crosses our desk. Um, Food stamps, it's, it's actually SNAP, but it's commonly known as food stamps, taxes, retirement, student loan issues, disability issues, issues with veterans affairs, all of it comes across a family law attorney's desk. And I see a lot of federal spending that goes into areas that don't provide a good return on investment. For example, we spend an awful lot of money on military that doesn't necessarily generate anything back into our economy. but we shortchange people on programs like making sure that SNAP or the food stamps benefit is tied to inflation a little bit better. Same thing with social security benefits, they aren't tied to inflation well. And those programs have a really good return on investment. They generate quite a bit into our economy for each dollar spent. And so uh, as it concerns really reaching and having things resonate with the individuals there in the second congressional district in Maine, uh, what do you think has been the toughest to get them to see the value in bringing someone who's looking for the return on investment when it comes to public policies and any kind of uh, work that you do to advance them? You know, honestly, the biggest thing that I butt up against is there is not a lot of coverage of independent candidates. And there is not a lot of coverage of women specifically, especially for independents. I find that almost everybody that I run into is pretty easy to have get on board with the campaign. Um, I have a really high conversion rate of folks I talk to. It's just that there aren't the opportunities in media. One thing that um, I, actually, I do two virtual town halls per week. And one of the things we've talked about recently, this is not just Republicans, Democrats are also doing it. There is a real inclination to step out of the public debate. There is a lot of pressure to not debate at all. So in, in the race I'm in, there were four debates scheduled. And um, I showed up to the first one alone. The gentleman did join me for the second one and then they refused to join me for the next two, they got canceled. So there's a lot of pressure to not attend sort of the, the free events that are put on and instead to just raise millions of dollars in fundraising and have curated commercials instead. And I don't think that's great for our democracy. 
No, I don't think it's good either, especially when it's essentially chasing capitalism as in as opposed to chasing we the people and ensuring that their voices are heard and their platforms and their positions as well. Um, and so that's incredibly disheartening and disappointing. But when it comes to your position and ensuring others have the opportunity to understand it better, what do you think that people need to hear most? Well, I, I think that I'm in a unique I don't. I wouldn't call it unique. I'm sure there's other people that have this an uncommon position, where the the competency and the qualifications are not a problem that I have. Uh, I think the biggest problem I have is is chatting with people and actually getting around the money. So I've come up with something that I think you might like. Um, instead of fundraising, I do what I call main raising. So the race that I'm in has already had 25 million dollars spent on it. There's more ads that can than you can imagine in this race. It means a very inexpensive media market. I ask people not to do that. Please don't give me money. Take the same amount of money that you would give me and let's use a little bit of capitalism back on itself. Go shop at a small business or donate to a not-for-profit, a, a either a shelter or for a heating oil fund um, or a food bank. And as you're doing that, say that I asked you to invest in the community. So Tiffany Bond asked me to shop at your small business or ask me to contribute to your food bank. Um, and um, I apologize for that. I am a mom as well. So you may have heard a little background noise. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, I asked people to take the same amount of money they would give me and instead invest it in our community. And it is um, an excellent way to um, to make sure that the resources are going into the community. And instead of those things where we say, hey, we wasted a million dollars or $25 million, or in the case of Maine's Senate race in 2020, a hundred million dollars, we're actually putting that into our community and into our citizens. That's a really novel approach to not only get your message out, but also to reinvest in the community that you want to represent. I would hope that that is something that will um, be very rewarding at the end of the day. Um, I guess we're gonna have to wait and see, but I will also definitely ask you, cuz I know this is your second run for the US House seat. What inspired you to run again? My kids, and it's also really stressful for my job. Um, it is. It is really hard uh, and painful to be helping people reconfigure their family and their life and have to tell them that I would really like to make sure that you are stable and healthy and happy and have a future, but I don't have the resources available to make that happen. And um, that is that is so heartbreaking that it is deeply motivational to try to change the system that we have available. Absolutely, and it's a powerful thing to be in the position to hopefully effectuate that change. And I'm wondering also from your first run for the US House seat, what are you doing differently? Um, I, When I started running for office, I'd, I'd never run before I ran in 2018. I'd never run for any office um, or any election. I only had maybe a dozen, slightly over a dozen followers on social media. I now have over 40,000. If you're on Twitter, come find me. I'm at Tiffany Bond. Um, I started out with myself. I now have over 200 volunteers. So we have actually a, a pretty big campaign given that it, we've spent less than $5,000 so far. So about 200 volunteers. We have folks sending out postcards five or 10 at a time all over the country. Um, we've got phone calls, we've got door knockings. We have two town halls a week that are virtual. I'm on just about any podcast I can get on. I have anywhere between two and 10 campaign events a week. Plus I'm a mom who runs a business. <laughs> so it's, it's uh, we've been having some pretty busy weeks like lately, but it's, it's a lot more organized and, and a lot more support than I had my first run. And I think the best part of it is on top of investing in communities, we've sort of built one and that's really what campaigns should be. I, I, I hope that whether I win or lose, that more people adopt like the, the main raising type of philosophy. And we look forward to election season instead of election season being the ads and the, the backbiting and not being productive in democracy, that it, it just becomes, hey, who are we gonna help this year and how are we gonna make our country better? Yes, I really, really like to hear that. I like to hear that you have that mindset and also that drive and that you're also taking advantage of um, 
having the community members, individuals around you who support your position, your cause, also join you and be able to participate in uplifting your voice and your message. That's a very powerful thing. So I think you're definitely on the right path. And so um, now as we're starting to close in, I guess what's on your radar? Um, well, it's uh, I'm really looking forward to <laughs> post campaign. I'm looking forward to not having an alarm clock on a Saturday. Um, but for the last two weeks, I've got just jam packed with a ton of events, and I'm I'm so excited. Um, I have events starting at 2 a.m. on Saturday, um, but I have events every night this weekend or this week, all through the next weekend, all the way through Election Day. Election day, I actually get to take it a little um, slow. We're not having a campaign party because it's very likely that this case or this um, that this race will go to ranked choice runoffs. So we probably won't have an election result on Tuesday night. I've had several of the news sources call me and be like, where's your campaign going to be? And I'm like, making meatloaf and tucking my kids in. That's uh, <laughs> what uh, I do on weeknights. Wow. Well, we definitely. We send you all the best as you are in this final stretch. And so for people who want to follow you and support you, where can they find you on social media? Sure, I'm easiest to find on Twitter. I'm at Tiffany Bond. I'm also on Instagram. If you sort of like a break from politics, there's not as much there. Uh, that's at Tiffany L Bond. I have Facebook. It is at Bond, the number four dot, or Bond, the number four M-E. And then the website is Bond, the number four dot M-E. Wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us. That's Tiffany Bond, an attorney who is also a candidate for Maine's 2nd Congressional District.